Your Kids Church Online. Let's get started. Good morning, Surge Kids. Welcome to another Surge Kids Online service. I am Pastor Shane. I am so excited to be with you guys this morning. Uh, we have some really great things in store for you guys. We are continuing our series on Teach Us How to Pray. Uh, last week we learned about uh, Easter. Uh, we talked about the missing piece and how Jesus is the missing piece in our lives and everyone's lives that uh, we need to make sure that we tell people about that as well as remember that in ourselves. Uh, but about two weeks ago we talked about um, our very first sentence in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew. It's, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we learned that uh, when we're praying, we first need to stop asking for things right away. We don't have to be uh, praying long prayers. We don't have to say crazy, long Christianese words. Uh, we, we just have to just talk to God, just like we're talking right now. Uh, so we learned about that last week. We learned about when we start our prayers, we need to be thanking Jesus for what he's done. We need to be thanking God. Uh, we need to be praising him uh, first and foremost when we pray. So, boys and girls, today we are going to be continuing on our series called Teach Us How to Pray. We're going to be talking about the second verse in this passage, and it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Now, we're going to be talking about God's will. Now, a lot of you this morning may be wondering, what does God's will mean? Well, God's will is this. It's what he wants to accomplish through you for the kingdom of God. And we're going to be talking about how we can fulfill God's will in our own lives, how we can pray for God's will to be done in our own lives, as well as when we're praying, we need to be asking God, have your way within my life. Uh, and when we're, when we're talking about prayer, uh, it's important that we, every time we pray, we ask God to move, may, or him, for Him to move and for us to be able to um, be used by Him every single day. So today, as we continue this series on Teach Us How to Pray, I want you guys to sit back, watch our intro video, and let's just dive into what God has to teach us this morning. I'm Peyton and I'm going to be continuing the series called Teach Us to Pray. Have you ever thought about what you want to be whenever you grow up? Some of you have already planned it all out. Maybe you want to be a firefighter. Oh, you think you bad now, huh? Come on, you ain't nothing but a red-headed twig. Come on, I'm going to treat you like a birthday candle and blow you out. <sighs> Not that kind of firefighter. I'm talking about a real firefighter. One that works hard at saving lives. Or maybe you want to be a professional dancer. <sighs> Not quite what I had in mind. I'm talking about this kind of professional dancer. Or maybe you've always dreamed of being a scientist. Welcome to my laboratory. That's a laboratory for you simple people. That's where scientists work. We're about to do a little experiment. I'm gonna take this red chemical and I'm gonna mix it with the blue chemical. You're gonna be amazed at what's about to happen. Here we go. Wow, that's dangerous. I was thinking more of a scientist like this. a teacher, a pastor, or a missionary. We all have plans for our lives, but the most important plan of all is God's plan. You see, if we want to succeed, it's not about our plan or our will for our life. It's about God's plan and God's will for our life. And that is the next part of the Lord's Prayer that we're gonna be talking about. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This means we have to do our very best to fulfill God's will and His plan for our lives. It's a choice we have to make, but it's an easy choice. Why? Because we know that God's will is better for us. It's a no-brainer. For example, if I were to give you the choice of cake or broccoli, which one would you choose? Boy, oh boy, I sure love me some cake. I like the sprinkles, I like the icing, I, like, I even like the smell of it. 
You have got to be kidding me. Or would you choose a hug from your mom or a slap in the face? Hmm, I'm trying to think here, which one of them would I choose? Hey, hey, how are you doing, bud? Mm. Ow, mommy! Mommy! That man slapped me. Of course you would choose a hug from your mom. It's a no-brainer. In our lives, we should decide, should we choose our will or God's will? It's a no-brainer. We should choose God's will. God's plan is always better. Sometimes our plans match with His. Other times, ours don't. But one thing's for sure, God's plan is always best. Well, it's time for you to get into your lesson today as you learn about the Lord's Prayer and how to seek God's will. This is Peyton reminding you, you can pray every single day. See ya! Hey boys and girls, it's Pastor Shane here. I am so excited to bring you the Bible story today. Uh, and our Bible story comes out of 1 Samuel 3, and it's about a boy who was living at a church. And I don't know if you, about you, but uh, I don't think I'd want to live in a church back then because they didn't have like the cool things like we do, like, you know, lights and, and you know, Wii's and all the video games and all the fun that we have. Uh, there was a lot of hard work, and Samuel worked for the church, and he worked for a man who was a priest named Eli. Now, I have a little friend with me uh, today. I'm pretty sure you know him, but uh, hey, Peter. Yeah. How you doing, bud? Good. How was your Easter? It was really good. Yeah? Did you find a lot of eggs? I found 50. 50? Oh, my goodness. Hey, you want to come up here and help me with the Bible story? Yeah. All right, come on up here, man. <laughs> man, every I'm time. I'm so fast. You're so fast. You should know this by now. I should know this yeah. by now. Well, we're going to be talking about Samuel, okay? Now I know Sam. I know Samuel. You know Samuel, right? Yeah, yeah, he's outside. You're pretty close to him, right? Yeah, we're really close. Yeah. So uh, we have Samuel, yeah. okay? We have pr the priest Eli, and we need a voice of God. And um, I think I want to. 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 Let me do it. You want to be the voice of God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this is pretty heavy. I mean, like. Let me do it. Let me do it. Okay, I'll let you. I'll let you be the voice of God. Okay. Yes. All right. So. One day, Samuel was uh, had a long day at work at the at the at the temple, and he went to sleep. All right, so he's sleeping in his in his room, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he hears the voice of God say, "Samuel, give me your chicken nuggets." No, no, no. He, you're gonna be the voice of God. You gotta say it right. <laughs> give me your chicken nuggets. They didn't have chicken nuggets back then. What they have? Bread. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's try this again. So Samuel was sleeping, and he heard a voice from God say, Samuel. Give me that slice of bread. No, no, okay. No, no, no. He just said, Samuel. That's his name? That's his name. I don't know. He just called his name? Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm going to try it. Okay, okay, you try it again. Yeah, try it yeah, again. Yeah. So Samuel was sleeping, and all of a sudden, he heard his name. Samuel. How was that? It, it works. It okay, works. Okay. okay. All right. So then Samuel woke up and he was, he was like a little weirded out. Like, who said my name? So he thought it was, it was Eli, the priest Eli. So he went over to Eli's room and he said, hey, did you call me? And he, he, Eli said, no, I didn't. Uh, go back to sleep. So Samuel went back to his room and he fell asleep. And all of a sudden he heard it again. His name. Samuel, give me McDonald's! <laughs> so Samuel wakes up again, and he hears this voice, and, and he says, it has to be the priest Eli. So he goes back to Eli's room, and he says, priest, I don't know if they called him father, I, don't, I, don't, I kind of know what, what the proper word was there. Uh, but he said, did you call me? And Eli said, nope, nope. not again, nope. no, please go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. And that third time, he heard his voice a third time. Samuel! Wake up! That's good. Like that. All right, yes. So he heard it and he said, man, this is weird. What is going on here? And Samuel went back to Eli's room and he said, did you call me? You had to call me. My name has been called three times in my sleep. What's going on? Nope. Now, the priest Eli knew what was going on. He said, hmm. Maybe it's God. 
It's wow. pretty serious, right? Uh, yeah. So maybe it's God. So he said, next time that voice calls you, you need to say, yes, I am your servant. I am hearing. Wow. I know, right? Let's see what happened. So, Did it happen? Did so, it happen? Did it happen? Let, let, let's, 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 let's not, let's, oh, okay. calm down, calm down, calm down. It's so exciting. I know, you're so excited. All right, so Sam would go back to sleep. And all of a sudden, he hears his name again. Sam, no! Wake up! <laughs> now this time Samuel didn't get out of his bed and go to Eli. What did he do? He woke up and he says, your servant is listening. Whoa. I know, right? Wow. Now that, that night God called Samuel to do something really big. Now, a lot of the times God calls us to do big things. Most of the time they are big things because they're for the kingdom when God calls us to do those. So God was calling Samuel to do something really big. Now, at this point in Samuel's life, he didn't want to do it. Uh, he was already struggling with the idea of, of, you know, not wanting to do this big thing. But when God calls you to do something, his you do will it. will you be do done. It. All right. And it was his will. It was God's will, not Samuel's will to do this. Now, Peter. Yeah. You want to give us one more God's voice? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give me your chicken tenders! I hope you don't speak to the other puppets this way. Don't use the God voice on them, okay? Okay, I won't. All right, all right, don't, don't convince nope. them to buy you chicken nuggets, okay? No, nope. nope. All right. Well, Peter, thank you so much for yeah. being with, with us with during the story. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys. We'll see you next week, okay? Yep. Bye. Bye. So, boys and girls, we need to remember that uh, today we're talking about God's will. And sometimes God calls us to do something that's going to make us feel uncomfortable, just like Samuel. But when we hear God's voice, we need to answer with, I am ready. I am your servant. I am here uh, listening to you. And that's exactly what Samuel did in our story today. So thank you so much for hearing this story. And let's hear some more from all of our friends. <laughs> Voila! It is I, the amazing master illusionist and prestidigit, prestidigit, magic guy, presto changeo. I'm here to razzle dazzle your senses and boggle your mind. Nothing up here, nothing up here, and nothing up here. Today is something very especially, um, special. Yes, I'm going to teach you the power verse. Today's power verse says. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 10. Ha ha! What an amazing power verse, boys and girls! But just like I do in my sold out shows all over the world, really in my living room with my grandma, I'm going to make things poof disappear right before your very eyes. I will make words for the power verse disappear with the help of my handy dandy sidekick. <whistles> hocus pocus, I'm so glad you are here. You will be helping us with this mind blowing disappearing trick. Hokey, say hello. The name is Hocus Pocus, not Hokey, not Pokey. Oh, whatever. Let's just get on with the power verse. Yes, let's take a look at it. Now, which words should I make disappear? Hmm, how about this one? This one! And this one! Ha <laughs> ha! Now let's see how well you remember it. Kids, you are going to say the power verse again with Hokey! It's Hocus Pocus! You're going to say the power verse on the count of three. One, two, a three. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 10. Ha <laughs> ha, that was pretty amazing. You were able to say the power words with the disappearing words, but prepare to be amazed. Er. I'm going to make even more words disappear before your very eyes. Like this one. And this one. Okay, okay. You said it once with the disappearing words, but let's try it again. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 10. Beautiful job. Thank you, children, and hocus pocus. You are so welcome. And now, for my greatest trick of all time, I'm going to make myself disappear. This is Presto Chango saying, now you see me, now you don't. Bruta, zuta, zut. <laughs> Boys and girls, there's something that I wanted to be when I grew up. When I was like your age, I always wanted to be a secret agent. I uh, wanted to work on the field and be able to uh, spy on other countries and and you know have these cool gadgets that uh, could get the job done. And these are all great things. And I grew up wanting to do that so much. But my my uh, my life has changed a little bit when I accepted Jesus in my heart, and I realized that. God has a plan for me, and he has a plan for everybody on this earth, and we need to remember that every single day, that that, that plan for your life is still there regardless if you're asking for it or not. God still has a plan for your life, and he wants you to do great things. And um, although I did not become a, a secret agent, I became a kid's pastor, and, and I became a dad, and I became a husband, and all these things are so much better than what I could have had as a secret agent. Um, but I had to remember that God's will is different than sometimes what we want to do. And that's okay because God has a bigger picture than us. God knows so much more than us. And um, I had to understand that um, when, when God has a plan for your life, you need to follow it. And some of you out there may be asking, how do I uh, make sure I'm following God's plan? And I say this, that I must get rid of my will. Now, boys and girls, if you truly want to follow God's will, like uh, it says in the Lord's Prayer in Matthews, you need to understand that we need to get rid of our will, our wanting to live, uh, the things that we want to do, and take up God's plan, God's will. Now, it's okay to have dreams. It's okay to dream about your life. And you know what? Even the Bible says we, God will give us the desires of our heart. And um, maybe some of the desires of your heart right now are something that God's going to uh, grow you up to be uh, when you grow up. Uh, but for right now, we need to understand that we need to, if God calls you to do something, uh, we need to do it. Uh, it's just like your parents. If they ask you to do something, there, there shouldn't be a questions asked. But now, I'm going to give you a little story. Uh, we talked last week about Jesus dying. And when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, um, he was even praying. And Jesus was saying... Um, Lord, uh, if this could, if there could be another way to forgive this world of their sins, can it happen? So even Jesus was trying to understand and wrap his mind around what God's will is. And, and ultimately, Jesus did what God's will was and that he died on the cross for our sins. But it doesn't take away the fact that we have desires. There's sometimes when God calls us to do something, it's a stretch or it's a, uh, a big deal. Um, sometimes it's out of our comfort zone, some things that we don't want to do. Maybe God's calling you to talk to a friend that, you know, is struggling with, you know, um, their emotions or, or struggling with something else in their lives. Uh, and you may be like, I don't like to talk about that, but God's will is different than our will. And he will give you the right words. He will give you the right things to do. Uh, just like in my life, I never knew growing up that I was going to be a kid's pastor or anything like that. But when I accepted God's will over my own desires, um, Jesus, Jesus made it so much better. And my life is so much better now that I have followed God's will. And I'm continuing to try to follow God's will every single day and God's plan every single day. Now, the next thing we have to do if you want to live God's will is that you must listen to God's voice. You have to spend time with Jesus. Uh, that's the only way you're going to find out what God's will is for your life. It's just like a friend. You're never going to figure out what's wrong with your friend or you're never going to figure out what's, what's happening in their lives if you never talk to them. Um, and 
you know, a friend may have something for you and you're just not asking about it or not talking to them. And it's just like that. God wants you to talk to him and ask him about his will. And you know what? He may not give you the like a direct answer right away. He may not tell you, hey, um, so-and-so, I want you to do this. He might give you small little things to do to lead up to something big. But we need to be asking God what he wants us to do. Uh, we need to be spending time in prayer and wondering, hey, God, um, what, what is it you want me to do today? or something like that um, because God's will is for your life God's plan for your life uh, is daily it's not just sometimes a far off thing it's a daily thing um, maybe God's calling you or asking you to do something for your parents today to make them feel better um, so God has a plan for your life and we need to spend time with Jesus and we need to understand that when we're talking to him he will give us the answer for what he wants us to do now so now that we, uh, we, we know that God's will, we get rid of our own will and we want to listen to God's voice. And lastly, we must obey God's instructions. So once you guys, uh, once you guys hear God's voice telling you what to do in a certain situation, you need to lastly obey His commands. You need to obey Him. And Samuel in the Bible story that we learned about today, uh, God has called him to do something really big. And, and it was to warn some bad things were going to happen to Eli and his sons. And Samuel was afraid that Eli was going to be mad at him for what he said. Um, so he, you know, those three times were wondering, what's who's calling my voice? And the last time when Eli said, you must uh, answer to God, Samuel had a tough decision to make. He had to either make uh, a decision to follow his own will or God's will. And eventually, uh, Samuel follows God's will and, um, and helps out. And it's just like Jesus. Jesus obeyed God. And even though he was trying to um, ask God for another way, uh, he eventually followed God's plan and God's will for his life. And that's what we need to do, boys and girls, is we need to be following God's plans and obey Him. And we understand that a lot of people in the Bible who didn't obey God's commands, um, a lot of things happened to them, bad things. Uh, not to say that you, just like Jonah, if you don't follow God's commands today, you're going to be swallowed up by a giant fish. But um, if we don't follow God's commands we're, or His His will for our life, and, and well, yeah, definitely God's commands, um, our lives are going to be a little bit different. Our lives are going to be a little harder because we're not following the plan that God had for us. Uh, we're following our own plan. And, and most of the time, our own plan, um, we don't have a good roadmap for that. But God does, and He knows where we're supposed to go. So boys and girls, today I want you to remember that when you're praying, you always need to pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is what uh, Jesus was trying to tell the disciples that when we pray, uh, once again, we're not asking for things, asking for physical things or, or healings in our lives. We're asking for God's will to be done, whether it's we're walking down the street and asking God, hey, what do you want me to do here? What do you want me to do in the future? Um, God, God may not call you today to do something, but maybe God will call you today to do something. I know a lot of kids who have been called to do missions work or even be pastors at a really young age because they were uh, willing to let go of what uh, their plans for, were for their lives and let God use their lives. And I'm telling you, they're doing great things for the Lord. So today I want you to remember that first we need to obey God uh, and listen to Him, and we need to ask, we need to talk to God, and then lastly we need to obey Him. Um, and it's simple as that. And sometimes it's hard. Uh, Jesus never said walking on this earth and following Him was going to be easy, and definitely it's not easy. But it's definitely going to pay off in the end when we're in heaven and Jesus looks at us and says, uh, "Well done, good and faithful servant." So boys and girls, I want to pray over you today. I want you to, I want to, I'm going to pray a blessing over your lives that God will uh, reveal his will for you. Uh, the small little things in life, the small little plans, even the big plan he has for your life uh, in, in the future for what he wants for you to do. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for what you do in our lives. We thank you that you speak to us no matter what. And we ask that you would just, as we're praying every single day we open our mouths and talk to you, that we are trying to obey your commandments and we're trying to follow your will, God. And Jesus, we may have desires, we may have things we want to do in our lives, uh, but we need to check them with you and see if that's uh, where we need to go, Jesus. You have the roadmap to our lives and we need to follow it. Jesus, we love you and we thank you so much for this day. We give you all the praise and all the glory today. In your name we pray. Amen.
Well, boys and girls, thank you for watching another Search Kids Online. We are so excited to see you guys someday soon. We don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm telling you, we're going to have a giant party when you get back here. Um, but uh, in the meantime, we hope you guys enjoyed our service today. We want you guys to remember to share this with your friends and your family uh, so they understand uh, what you're learning about. Also, they may learn something from it as well. Um, boys and girls, I'm praying for you every single day. I hope that you guys are having fun at home uh, and you're driving your parents not so crazy. Uh, but parents know that I'm praying for you as well and make sure that you uh, have been following us on Facebook for all the things that we've been doing. Uh, we, will, um, we will see you guys very soon and make sure you guys um, uh, stay tuned at the end of this video. We have some review questions for you uh, just, to re just to drain our brains and rewind what we learned about today. Uh, guys, I love you. I'm praying for you. We hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you soon. <laughs>